There are LED tubes out there which are potentially dangerous, generally the older type, and I think I found one. Let's have a look. I was changing some failed fluorescent fittings and old LED fittings out in an office, and I noticed this fitting here. You can see that the LEDs are getting power as they are lit, but they are very faint. This is what generally happens with LEDs. They fade away and not just pop. You can also notice that the LED starter, which is often required for an LED tube, is missing. This would suggest that the ballast of the fitting has been bypassed, as an LED start is needed when swapping out a tube with a fitting with a magnetic ballast. I've got another video on this, but I will include some diagrams in a bit. This fitting only had one tube in place, as you can see, and it's a double fluorescent. You can see that one starter is still in place on the reverse side. So what have we got? So has this ballast been bypassed? Is this tube only powered from one end? It's difficult to know, as the tube had no live end markings, and one side of the fitting still had a starter in. The only way to know for sure is to look inside. So off came the cover, and as you can see the ballast has not been bypassed. So how is this tube still getting power with no starter? The LED starter is generally just a solid link, so the flow of power has been interrupted. After carefully checking the internal wiring, I was confident I could replace this fitting with an LED tube and LED starter, which I did, and all worked fine. But what was happening with this tube? Was some current being induced to make the LEDs glow slightly? I wasn't convinced about that, so I took it on to have a look at it. This is what I found. It's an aluminium extrusion with LED tape mounted on a solid aluminium strip. The LED driver is inserted into the tube. It was the pins on the end caps that interested and concerned me. Each end only had a connection to one conductor. As you can see, the pins are shorted and the single conductor is soldered on. This is the same at both ends. This can only mean one thing. The driver is getting a feed from one end and a neutral return path through the other. The big problem with this is, it's possible to get a shock from one end when inserting the tube. And here, you can see with one of the tube ends energized, the power flows through the circuitry and out on the pins at the other side of the fitting. I measured 240 plus volts. So this is not a neutral. This is the line voltage. This will only become the neutral if it's connected to neutral. At the moment it's not, it's just a continuation of the live feed. You touch this pin while the other end is energized, you will become the neutral return path as power tries to get back to the Earth star point at the transformer. So what's happening here? Let's have a look at how it generally works. Here we have our fitting with a magnetic ballast and our LED tube. The LED tube has a driver, but its connections are at only one end. At the other end of the tube, you just have a link. There's no connection between the two ends. So let's do the flow of power. Power comes in, it'll most likely go through a capacitor. It'll go through the ballast, into the first pin, through the circuitry, and return on the second pin, where it'll go through the starter, which is just a solid link. Return on the third pin, go through the link, and there's your neutral return path. That's how it works. So we've got power to both ends, but both ends of the tube aren't connected. And here's another way of doing this. This is with the ballast and the LED starter bypassed, known as live end. Power comes into the fitting, through the first pin on the tube, through the circuitry, returns on the neutral. This is your live end. This one you have to be careful with, because the tubes will generally say one live end. It'll only go in one direction. You flip it over, you've got this short here, and that'll just be across live and neutral. You're going to trip the MCB and possibly damage your tube. You can also bypass the ballast and leave the starter in place, which will mean that you can usually flip the tube over so you're not worried about shorting it out at one end. This is all in the other video. So let's have a look at this LED tube I found and see what the problem is with that. So here's the tube, and let's look at the flow of power again. The ballast is not bypassed but you'll notice the link has been removed. We haven't got an LED starter. So power will come in through the balusters before. The will on pin one. Normally it would go through that link through the starter, but power's not going to go that way because we've got a gap now, haven't we? We've got no connection here. So power will stop there. 
but this link is shorted with the cable soldered onto it and so this is taking power onto the LED driver. Power will go through the circuitry and return on this conductor here. Again shorted out. These pins are shorted out. Soldered connection onto the pins. There's no path this way to the starter. We'd have a short. So we've just got the return path here. And this will be our neutral return. This is power. This is dangerous. Because if this ends energised, power will go through the circuitry. There's no isolation. It'll just return on this conductor. When this is not connected, it's not a neutral. It hasn't got a return path. You've just got the extension of the live cable going through the circuitry and appearing on this pin. You touch that pin, you will become the return path. You get various different types of lamp holder. You've got lamp holders where you push the tube in, where you could be applying directly onto power. Or, which often happens, the lamp holder is not lined up. So you'll stick the pins in to try and rotate it. So you can actually slot the tube in. And in doing so, you could liven that end up. And you could be touching this end and you could get a shock. This will be all the stock generally. If you're swapping out all the tubes, do be careful. You should always have power off when you're swapping out LED tubes or fluorescent tubes. There will be some resistance in the circuitry. So the magnitude of the shock will vary. And that will affect different people in different ways. An added risk is that you're up a ladder. And even the slightest sensation can make you react. And most injuries are from falls from ladders. So if you notice a fitting without a starter, just give it a second thought. The ballast might have been removed, or the tube could be constructed like this. So this fitting was a magnetic ballast. You also do get electronic ballasts. Electronic ballasts don't have a starter. This is a diagram of how an electronic ballast will be bypassed. Lots more information in the other video. I hope that's been of some interest, and thanks for watching. Be safe.